I am usually very witty and charming. Bring it. <laughs> I have never wanted anything more than for you to be my wife. Yes! They found cancer. I don't have much time left. I am in this with you. You make me feel like I can do anything. I love you, and I will all my life. All My Life, rated PG-13. On demand now. Go to watchallmylife.com. Okay, and that was the trailer and the tease to All My Life uh, for Universal Studios and starring my dear friend and star of the movie, Harry Shum Jr. My name is Ken Jung, and I want to thank Universal Studios and Gold House for arranging this Q&A. It really is an honor uh, to be a part of this, and I would like to introduce um, my dear friend and star of the movie, you know him from Glee, you know him from Crazy Rich Asians, and also I just know him as one of my one of my dear friends. Please welcome Harry Shum Jr. Hey, hi everyone. Thanks, thanks Ken for doing this. Thank you so much. This is, is going to be. Uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you about this. No, this is. It really is. Uh, well, first of all, you know, full disclosure, Harry and I are, are dear friends, and even before Crazy Rich Asians, and. Uh, Known you for quite a bit. I think I guest starred on Glee. I think uh, I remember yeah. hanging out that that one time. And we we so we've known each other for years. And uh, I know your beautiful wife Shelby. So um, and it's always it's always challenging when you're interviewing friends and who are also in the business, who are also actors, and you know, and how to how to format it really well. And then I've noticed just from interviewing friends in general, it's just hard. It's just going to be maybe. <laughs> this weekend huh it's been this weekend <laughs> like wait, wait we need to we need to talk about it. yeah yeah it's just like so you know playoffs right and they're like okay can we just like focus on the but but really um this movie is of particular interest to um myself and my wife tran um who harry and shelby also know my my wife is a breast cancer survivor and still uh cancer free after after 12 years and so this movie um my wife and i saw you know has particular uh deeper emotional resonance and uh we really related to truly every aspect of the movie and i just want to uh just as a fan and as a peer just applaud you and jessica roth for just your superb performances um honestly i i just couldn't think of a better on-screen couple to convey um, a story that at the end of the day is not about cancer. It's really about hope and love. And I really, if anything, um, it's, it's a very nuanced approach to filmmaking and telling the story because, um, A, it's based on a true story, right? Right, Harry, am I correct? And uh, it's, it's inspired from, uh, from this beautiful couple, uh, uh, Jennifer Carter and Solomon Chow, um, that they made this, uh, their friends made this video when they found out that he was diagnosed and, you know, only had a limited time here uh, to, to put a, to give them a magical wedding that they deserve. And, and uh, so they band together and created this fundraising um, and, and raised uh, a, a lot of money of 50, almost $50,000 uh, to to give them the wedding that they, they deserve and cover medical bills and all the stuff that people are struck with um, uh, daily and um, but it was just their their way and approach of of waking up every day and then knowing that they have a little bit limited amount of time and the way they moved forward and 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 chose to live and, and chose with gratitude chose to love and chose to spread as much positivity during the time that they had and it was it was really really inspiring. And, and those and everything you articulately mentioned is is so true because um, um, my wife Tran was what was very interesting was just moments in the movie where uh, you know Jen is saying seize the day to Saul or you know quitting your day job and is things that a I I also related to but also when when my wife was going through chemotherapy she had actually said you know I don't regret anything that's happening right now, I would do it all over again. And I felt like Saul and Jen really um, 
a if anything it's just represented what what true love you know is is all about and um just to tackle a subject like this that is real life and true to you know and true to the story how how, how do you prepare for a role like this um first of all i mean it gave me chills just you saying that just you know what you uh, what you and Tran went through and, and what, what she uh, went through is just so, something that, you know, we as actors just uh, try our, our best from the research, from talking to people um, and, and try and portray and, and, and elicit those, those emotions and, and, and but in a storytelling fashion, you know, told within under two hours, which uh, at times is difficult to convey a lot of those things, but um, that is part of the job is, is to be able to provide um, some sort of uh, relatability and also um, at times too, specifically with this film, which is a hybrid between romantic comedy and romantic drama, because you're also celebrating those, those, those beautiful moments and memories that you made with your significant other and friends, um, but also not shying away from those darker, deeper scenes where it includes arguments and includes uh, um, just uh, hesitation and um, uh, anger and, and, and confusion. Um, so I'm sure all of that uh, came about with, with and specifically with what y'all went through. I just remember uh, hearing you talk about that in, in, in certain um, platforms and it always just broke my heart, but always was what was really warmed uh, my heart is the fact that you know, the way that you were there to support her uh, in, in so many ways and even certain things when you, you wanted to just be there for her, you know, her strength and, and, and uh, to, to say, no, go and, go and do what you need to do and follow your dreams as well. And I think it mirrors a lot to, to what doesn't happen in a lot of these films when it specifically talks about cancer because whether the focus sometimes might be on the cancer alone and we forget about the humanity of the person that's dealing with this and also the caretaker that usually gets excluded from, uh, from the story uh, in a lot of ways of what they have to deal with because yes, they might not be dealing with a terminal illness, but their emotions are, are being assaulted in so many different ways, mentally and emotionally. Um, and in turn, physically as well. So there's just so much that had to be had. So we wanted to make sure that there was a fair balance between the two stories. And Mark Myers, our director, along with Todd Rosenberg, who, um, who was a writer on this, uh, did, did such a beautiful job weaving um, this joyous tragedy and, and filling the spaces that, um, that humans go through day in, day out, and daily. Uh, so it was important for us to 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 infuse that with with all those elements uh, to also just ring true for for what this real couple dealt with. You know what what interested me was um, you know I felt like there were parts of Jen, parts of Saul in me. I felt like there were parts of Jen, parts of Saul in Tran, and something that was very. Uh, it was something my wife had said when she was, you know, really uh, during the chemotherapy and during the surgery, um, you know, I, I, I sometimes I would remark, if, you know, do you want, I, I don't know if I want people, you know, if you don't want people knowing about this, it's fine, you know, and, and there, there are elements of Saul that I related to because I always, sometimes I, um, I envision myself if I were in a similar situation, I would maybe internally maybe instinctively want to withdraw there was a great scene with you and um jessica in the bathroom and when jessica leaves when jen leaves the bathroom you're just alone and you just wanted to be alone and uh it was just all overwhelming and uh and it, it for some reason that really resonated with me and it almost there was almost a projection of sometimes the 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 darkest instinct is just to go at it alone and uh and it's very natural and whereas um tran my wife was kind of similar to uh to uh, jen where she was like i i want to i really need i really need my friends and family i want to have i you know anyone who is sending me good wishes or even if it's a stranger i 
it, it keeps me strong. And that, that's something I've learned uh, from Tran specifically is, you know, and, and um, I'm surprisingly, uh, it's surprising to hear me say this, but I'm, I'm pretty introverted and naturally. And then she has actually taught me to kind of welcome you know, don't be afraid to receive love. And it felt like Saul went on that journey a little bit too. It, it uh, you know, with, with doing the wedding and, and the, and the kind of the, the, you know, you know, the, the, the knee jerk reaction to not go, you know, not want to go with the wedding. I mean, you, in general, when you are getting married, you get butterflies, you know, but when you're doing this plus a terminal illness, it's like, what do you, I, I you know, and then everyone's young, you know, how, how did how did that resonate with you and how does that apply you know to your character how you approached it elements of you in it you know i'm just curious your psychology as an actor yeah we you know i think we coming into onto this project you know you're 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 excited to to take on uh, you know uh, a role like this and to help tell this story but the part of it is the responsibility that that you're, you're also, you know, this is inspired by a true story. So, uh, you know, where, how do you navigate that? And where do you take your liberties? And where do you, you know, stay the course of, of what happened? And, you know, we were so lucky to be able to talk to Jen, the real Jen Carter. Um, and, you know, Jess, Jessica was on the project before I was, so she had a lot more time with her. And then when I went, finally got to sit down with her, she was just so open and shared pictures and videos, which I, I think uh, when you're able to see that, um, you see a lot of a, a glimpse of their humanity um, because, you know, the camera in a lot of ways doesn't lie. Uh, and, and you can, you can, you can see uh, who a person was, what the personality was, how they look away. But um, Jen, being so brave, uh, knew that the focus of this movie and this story should be about the story of, of, of their relationship and, and the message that they want to send uh, and that Saul wanted to send. So she made sure to tell us and tell Jessica that this is... She, she gave us that freedom of don't try and impersonate us. Don't try and look at mannerisms because I, the most important part for her and Saul was their connection. And she wanted to make sure that, uh, that we connected in a way we didn't, we weren't bogged down by, you know, the, the way someone walks, um, which, uh, you know, I think is important in, in, in uh, certain projects, but this particular one allowed us to just really sit and connect and honor the story, honor what we were given and what Todd Rosenberg wrote, um, this beautiful script that even had elements that that hit you so hard of like even breaking the way uh the reveal of the dog and what it represents during that time it just it just hits you differently so um for for me having that uh really really helped because it allowed me to just be present uh, every single day when i went to set and also think of a way of like also what saul was going through internally of of, of having to have this be so public and I think there is a certain point when he did embrace it and it took some time because I think anyone will have some hesitation just because of, of, of everything that you're going through, everything that's going through your head when, when, when you're seeing uh, what you know, the outcome uh, that, that you have in your life. And, and there's a certain surrenderness that, 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 that happens. And I, I thought that um, I had to make sure to, to, to shape it that way along with Mark and, and Jessica and we would find moments so it didn't seem like it was just going uh, the typical route that you would see a, a movie like this go. Um, so I'm really, really grateful to, to have good creative people and also um, to have the blessing of, of Jen um, to, to be able to, to navigate this and, and put a little bit of our spin on it too as well. What was your favorite or most challenging scene to shoot? Uh, I think the, the most challenging, just because it's just emotionally exhausting, was what the the scene that you mentioned um, in the bathroom and, and having having that fight. You know, when you read it on script, it's it's really powerful. And then we had to add in between the lines of 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 knowing that how Mark wanted to shoot too, and, and giving us um, this opportunity to to have these uh, 
longer takes that that wasn't just knowing that we can cut here and cut there and then it kind of maybe will alter the energy. Uh, so trusting us as actors to be able to have that, but also it put a lot of pressure to make sure that we got it right. Um, and, and Jess and I just have such a good friendship that we, uh, we trust each other so much to, to play off of each other, whatever we threw in. And some moments are completely spontaneous that, uh, that worked and some that didn't, but um, to allow that freedom, that play box to, to know that I know a lot of times when people argue, you, you try and shoot back at each other, especially in a relationship, you're thinking about how to, how to get the upper hand in a weird way. Um, but for this particular scene in this movie, there is just, for Saul, it's just, at that point, it was almost just giving up and, and, and not knowing how to convey those feelings, which I'm sure uh, a, a lot of people going through anything, um, specifically with any disease, just cannot be described in words. Uh, and, and that's, I think, the hardest part when you want to have people understand, but you can't even express it in, in, in the language, whatever language that you speak. And sometimes that the silence speaks for itself. Yeah, amen. I, I I felt that, you know, in the performances, it felt like you were both you and Jessica had moments that where you were allowed to breathe and, and find your own truth in that way. And I think what also made the movie special is the casting, you know, in addition to you and Jessica, you know, my dear friend Jay Farrow was in it. And, uh, you know, it, it was also, um, it, well, just the supporting cast in general, were all outstanding. And, the, there was just so much love. I mean, the, people will always talk about the chemistry with you and Jessica, but I just felt like as an ensemble, you guys felt like real friends. You know, you felt so organic. And I thought, and I thought what Jay Farrow did um, was was really what he was doing was really really good. I, I really dug his performance and showing uh, a nuance to him that a lot of people may not know. But I just thought he just crushed it. Yeah, I don't get to see, and it's it's. I think it's just so crucial. That, that part, uh, the rest of the cast to fill, um, the rest of the cast was so crucial in it because I think whether I, it's important for Jessica and I to have that chemistry, but if the friends don't work, then that support system is completely um, gone. And that is a big element of why the story exists in a lot of ways. Um, and what was, what was so special about being part of this project outside of the story is having this group of these group of uh, uh, um, actors and, you know, Jay Farrell, uh, Kyle Allen, Chrissy Fitt, um, uh, Mario Scott, uh, John Rodensky, like I can go on and on about the people, Kiala Settle, like she, they, they were able to come and they read the script, no matter what part it was, how big or small it was, they were just game. They just, and, and, and it, you felt that on set, there's moments where it was just an ensemble. Everyone would had, you know, a little bit tidbits to do, but they were just there to do whatever they needed to do to help carry the story. And we felt that in the crew as well. And you, I'd have uh, different crew members at Gaffer that would come up and be like, hey, you know, I, I, my mom's going through this right now, or I have a friend that, that I lost and this story means a lot to me. And I'm just here to, to do whatever I can to, to help let this be the best that it can be. And to, to have that energy on set day in, day out, um, was just uh, what you would hope for to uh, when you're part part of a project that everyone cares equally but in different ways and they just want to see this on the screen and 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 hopefully you know resonate with with people that that are going through the same thing or giving a little bit of insight for people who who never have. I mean, speaking of ensemble and you know and the friends, it, it, it have, with I love the fla I love the flash mob, the proposal, you know, to the Oasis song. Was that like, I mean, how that came about? That was just such an emotional moment, just to watch in general. You know, it just a it's a great proposal scene. How does that how does that match your real life proposal to to Shelby? <laughs> was it um, was it an Oasis song? Was it um, oh, man, it was, was it a Judas Priest song or something? Or you know, <laughs> I wish I could I could have done that. I literally it was. Sobbing, crying, trying to put words together. I just, I love that. Please say yes, and then just like, just, just ex trying to express those feelings. It never goes that that Hollywood big grain gesture that you know is is um, that we get to know that we've gotten to know over the years. But like, 
uh, this this proposal was cool because Je uh, Jessica did thought it would be best to not come to rehearsals so she would get a better reaction. We all agreed on that that would be the best thing. So we got to like rehearse freely and try like different things. And, um, and it was just cool because just, I always think even like, you know, I come people, it's not uh, uh, new news that, you know, I, I come from a dance background and I'm a dancer. So to Saul is not a dancer. He's, he's not a singer. He's, you know, to, you can go that route of making it super polished and, and well rehearsed, but there's something special about this guy just so nervous knowing that she would love this, even though he is not into all this stuff. He's, he's none of those things. And, but the fact that uh, he put his love over his fear of, of doing something, I thought said a lot. And you could tell by certain like, you know, uh, gestures that we made that, you know, Mark put in there that the combination of things that I was throwing out there that made it into the edit, I thought was, uh, was said a lot about the relationship and the, the hoops that they would jump, uh, jump through to, to just get a smile from each other um, and, and, and make and bring their friends along so they, they can all experience uh, and, and have these memories that they can always share forever. And also, I'd be remiss to say what, you know, this is a universal story that everyone, you know, can relate to. And I think that is what makes this movie so special. But there is a specificity there that makes it resonate with me as an Asian American. And, you know, to have an Asian American lead in a studio film, you know, uh, it's rare that, uh, you know, to put it, Quite simply, it's just rare to see us in multidimensional roles uh, in Hollywood on a routine basis. And uh, what does this mean for you to play Solomon Chow um, uh, in all my life? And how does that mean to relate to you and the Asian American community? Yeah, I think the, the first thing that I wanted to, to to make sure I tackled beyond that was just you know getting the story right and getting 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 Saul right and. Uh, um, but what was special and, and, and I, it didn't click in my head until like I was, I think it was, uh, doing a, I think it was like, we're, I was driving off and, and then to the beach and just where I, it was that beach moment where we're just having intimate conversations, slow dancing. And I think in between the takes, I just thought like, what, this is rare, uh, for, to, for someone who looks like me to to be able to play someone who just can breathe and sit and not have to perform this idea of what uh, specifically an Asian man is. And I just got to be, and I just felt so grateful at that moment to, to, to focus stro strictly on uh, that person in front of me and how I was gonna help convey that love uh, into that story. And that was really, really, um, almost a strange feeling, to be honest with you, because a lot of times there's so many things that are thrown at you, of, which I think is incredibly important. But representation, I think, doesn't uh, exist only uh, specifically of just race, you know, of like of, of, of someone's complete background, knowing, knowing uh, where they came from. And because and, uh, and, and I think so much comes with, with that, that I think it's equally as important, but I think what's equally as important is, is to see someone um, who doesn't look like you on, on that screen and be able to just be, uh, have everyday human uh, uh, interactions that, that um, anybody can, can relate to. Everyone can relate to being loved and are not feeling loved or going, you know, cancer is not something that is, you uh, um, that doesn't know, you know, you know, race. It's 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 going to hit anyone. It can hit anyone, and um, but beyond that, just to play a romantic lead, to be able to just exist in in a world um, that we've been excluded from uh, just for centuries, and in, in specifically in Hollywood, and you know, not even talking about history and time of of why we're at the place where we're at. That to say that this is rare to see, I think. Um, 
I feel very fortunate to, to be put in this position, but also I would have championed, even if I wasn't in this position, but to see someone else carry this role and, and do their thing, um, just as I've, I've, I've um, supported and championed before, because it just, it brings me joy that uh, more opportunities are being given to just be whole, whole, uh, whole human beings, which I always said, as simple as that, you know, and it's not even being specific on being a certain person. It's just being a whole human being and, and in different places in the world and in different situations. Yeah, it's our mutual friend, John Chu, director of Crazy Rich Asians. He, he described it. It's not a movie. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're, you know, we're all part of that. You know, we're all part of that tableau of, of progress that, you know, we we can express through our individualism, through our individual art, our collective art, and then and art that will, you know, that can surprise us in so many ways. And I think there's, there's, there seems to be in a good way, just, um, just more depth in our community and, and, and more support, you know, and I think that, you know, to feel that love, um, you know, it's, it, it's no secret for me, like when, we're all together on crazy rich Asians in that final scene. And, and then, you know, you and I are there and we're all hanging out and, um, you know, and, and now to see everybody else blossom and now to see you, you know, being the lead of your own studio movie. I mean, to me, it's, it's not lost on me, man. And, and, and you, you just, you carry it so well. And, uh, it's, uh, it's so inspiring. And I mean, what is, you know, it's kind of hard to say as actors, like, because I always hate being asked this by, you know, you know, what is your, you know, what are, what are your dreams, you know, like, and, and it's not just saying in size of role, you know, it's just, you know, what do you envision that you would like else to see happen? I think you touched on that. You're, you're like, if, if anyone else was doing this, you would also support, you know, much like I would, you know, you know, to me, I want to see this and more, you know, I want to see this and more. I just want this to be, I want this to be a routine thing where I'm just supporting my friend's work, you know, which I am doing right now. And this is, you know, I hope I can keep doing more Q and A's with you. Yeah. You know, that's like, that would be the dream. What, what kind of, what kind of vision do you, do you have, you know? No, I look back and, uh, you know, even in, you know, your career, uh, just where you came from and, and how, you know, you went came from uh, a doctor to being a comedian and to to uh, and then to an Instagram to, model. Go ahead, say it. Instagram model. model. You can that's, say it. That's, that's, fine. No, that's that's in your future. That's so, in my future. I'm yeah, not, not ready yet for it yet. You're almost. I'm, there. I'm three <laughs> sit-ups away. I got it. But the interview is not about me. It's about you. Go ahead. But like you know, I think to to even going like all the work that you've done and knowing that the hardship that you kind of had to go through in Hollywood, sometimes you're very limited on, on the roles that you were able to do. And you, you figure out like, well, I, I need to, I need to, I can spin it as much as I can, but also, you know, if I don't, if I, I don't take this on, someone else is going to do it. So if I can progress knowing that there's a long game and, 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 and longevity in what I want to do, I want to continue doing that. And so it's, it's being able to, to know what what that means, and for me, you know, uh, I've I've been doing this for 15 plus years, and you know, I, I've been put in positions where you're just like, well, if I don't do this, I'm I'm never gonna even be allowed to just do what I love to do, and that's act. Um, and then you hopefully will slowly chip away at, at finding getting opportunities that, that will allow you to. Uh, uh, really have a wide range of, of things to to play because um, you know specifically even talking about Asian American um, actors or, or even roles or characters um, it's important to know that Asian American actors can play roles that aren't made for Asian Americans you know because also we're Americans you know but also there's this there's a spectrum of like seeing British actors uh, play American, you know, American roles. Like there's, there's a range of that, that that can happen. But also the hard part is when you're, people say that there's an even playing field and I think that's untrue. And specifically with a lot of people who always use the excuse of, well, we make fun of everybody. So we're giving that equal opportunity. I think there's, that doesn't work because sometimes you're punching forward. Sometimes you're punching up for people who 
have are a little higher than you. And then a lot of times you're kicking someone that's laying down on the floor that has never been able to get up and exist as as someone who is 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 able to walk um, like like someone who's respected or someone who is seen as human. And I think those things is I, I want to be able to to see the the community be able to play all these roles. So the stereotypes become uh, so muddled that we don't even know uh, what stereotypes are for whatever community. And and I think that's when we start are able to when you're talking about like jokes and stuff like that, then you're able to do it freely because everyone's on an even playing field. And right now it's not. Um, but my hopes is that the previous generation and generations before who had to suffer through a lot of roles that they weren't, um, they didn't have access to uh, if they're still doing it, or maybe they're coming out of retirement because they had, they're just been so hurt by the industry that they can come back and, and, and have more opportunities now. And also for the younger generation to to also look back and know that there were hard, hardships uh, for a lot of people who've been doing it for a long time, and and to continue that that and and, and lead by talent, but also lead with uh, uh, knowing that there is a responsibility in, in the roles that they they take on. That's wonderful. With a film that has so much resonance and meanings uh, on so many layers, you know, that we've, that we've discussed and, and um, kind of the impact this film you know, has made, will make, you know, just what about you personally? Like what, you know, what did you learn personally from Saul and Jen's story? Uh, you know, I always had this, I, I always led with empathy, uh, you know, anything that I do. And, 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 and sometimes to the point where I care too much about something. And I think that sometimes I've learned that's detrimental to uh, um, my emotion, uh, my emotional state and, 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 and also to mental state and along with uh, it might do something, alter my performance because uh, I might be doing too much. Um, but what I took away from this film is the, the idea that when Jessica and I, we, the eulogy, when she was reading the eulogy to, to, to me when I was in, in bed towards the end, um, I was overwhelmed with just emotion and, and I had an ounce of what, of what the future would look like being in that place. And that, it's hard for me to not get emotional because it, it broke my heart in so many ways that knowing also that I will, would never understand fully what that feels like. So I, I had a little bit of that and it took me a while to, to get out of that, um, that state because, you know, it, it weighs so heavy on you to not just know what, uh, Saul was going through, but what millions of people are going through and to, to know what people are going to be reeling with, uh, when you're gone and, and, you know, the, the obstacles of, of figuring out how to deal with, um, you know, you no longer being there or, or how they're going to get through and navigate, uh, their lives, um, without that person that they love. Um, and, and, and just dealing with the rest of the obstacles that life kind of hands you with. Um, I, I, I came away appreciating, and this is going to sound cliche, but I think it's, it, it's, it's the need of reminder to, to just appreciate those, those little, little things. And sometimes it's just sitting there and observing and taking in what's in front of you, what's around you. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, having a, a a young daughter uh, that's uh, under two years old, just watching her discover things, watching her um, uh, uh, be affected by by something that seems so trivial and, and, and just uh, basic in a lot of ways, and, and seeing them discover new 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 words or or see how a certain thing works, it's just given me so much joy and appreciation for 
for life and, and sometimes making a stranger smile with, with uh, a simple nice gesture or even just waving high is, is, is something that is, I think so powerful because you don't know what that leaves, what you're leaving in that person that's going to help them get through the day sometimes, or maybe they had a crap day. And uh, so I, I'm, I have led with that, especially with the insane year that we've all had. And, um, and a lot of us in different ways, you know, uh, that, that a lot of us might not even ever know uh, the people that are even close to us are going through because they might not say it. Um, so it's just asking and, 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 and talking to, to people and connecting as much as possible. And that, that's what I took away from this film. And I think that I'm going to carry that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I, I you know, for me watching you, um, because you have to, you know, you just have to, it's like the whole movie. You really have to just be so vulnerable and, you know, you, you really have to, you know, it's, it's, you know, um, scary, you know, when you're, when you really, a lot of actors say they have to expose your soul and they, and that phrase is just used over and over again. And to the point it becomes kind of hacky to say, but you really did. It really is hard to really, it's, it's not to, when I saw Saul suffering, you know, when I saw, you know, your portrayal of Saul, it, it, the way and I, I don't know if I'm articulating this um, in the way that I want to, but the way you portrayed it was so real. And and it was for someone as, you know, um, and I'm not even saying this in a jokey way, but someone in, in who is so handsome and so good looking and um, and and it, it it was it was stripped away and you really got to see, you know, um, the real Saul, the real Harry. And I think that's why, you know, um, for me and Tran, you know, we, there's so much there that, I mean, you, we, there's so much, you know, inspiration that just you allowing yourself to, you know, uh, lose your vanity. And there's moments where, uh, even that, uh, even moments where you had a moment with, uh, with the Jen, the the moment in the hospital after the you know a, a, after the scan ooh, it just really you know it's it's tough to watch you know in a good way and uh but then to lead to the honeymoon which was you know absolutely amazing and uh this is you know this is a movie that uh you know i was talking uh to train this is a movie this is a movie you cry multiple times to <laughs> it's just you just you just call it you know you, you you cry and then you think you're out of tears and, you, and then you come back to it and you start crying again and but it's a good cry it's um it's a constructive cry and i think exactly what you say in, the, in this pandemic you it's something that's necessary it's a humane cry and i think that uh, both you and jessica really you know found found the truth in that um what do you hope, you know, uh, what do you hope other people will, will learn from this? You know? Um, I think just, just that, I think it's, you know, yeah. allowing yourself to, to be present and feel an honor. I think in a lot of ways how you're feeling at that moment and, you know, to not let it carry over too much or let it, um, let it, boil to the point of you know being harmful to yourself or other people but i i think you you should be allowed to to have have those moments whether it be crying or or laughing at something that might not that might not seem funny but in a lot of ways it's it's you know how we look at life it's you know you laugh at the, at the weirdest things sometimes because you're just in confusion and wondering like why are you angry about a certain thing right and then you start to question uh what what your reactions are and what do they mean but you know i love hearing what 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 people how people are are, are taking this film and what they're taking away from it uh because you know, at the end of the day, you know, we go through the process of making this film and, and all that stuff we, we do. That's, 
we say it's hard in the industry, but at the end of the day, what's really hard is what people are going through in real life. You know, what you went through with Tran, what, what other people are, are, are dealing with right now, that is the hard stuff. So anything to provide at this, uh, at this point, whether it be entertainment to make you forget a little bit about the stuff or make you feel like you're, you're finding some relatability and to, to make you feel less alone or to, um, to have, I don't know, maybe a little bit of closure and to find some peace with whatever has happened in your life. Uh, I think there's multiple things that you can take away from and, and it might be as, as something as, as, as representation. And, and, and then you, you're, you're getting to see a glimpse of, of what um, people have gone through in the world that, that, are, that, is, that has d dealt with this terrible, terrible disease that has taken people uh, way, way too early. Um, so to me, the film is, is, uh, is, is the people's now. And, uh, I'm so grateful to, to the red, real Jen Carter and, and, and the fact that we can honor, uh, Solomon Chow and, and, you know, the spirit, the beautiful spirit that he is that I didn't get to know, but I felt like I got to know through, through his stories and through, um, playing, uh, uh, playing him and a cool tidbit that it feels very full circle for me is that Jen shared with me that um, when Glee was on, she, they used to sit together every, uh, every week and watch the show. And, and, you know, during that time, the representation or just seeing Asian males that got to like dance and do stuff uh, wasn't, wasn't around much and so the only glimpses they had that guy who was in the background dancing along and maybe getting a couple lines and and they would cheer that on and so Jen would say like the fact that I got uh, you know you're playing him and, and uh, really nothing to do with me I, I, I also kind of I'm this like I, I, it's weird to tell that story but I just thought that the fact that he knew who I was and I'm getting and I knew who he was and now I know who he is and I'm inspired by him when he was at, at one point inspired by, I don't know, my, my, my dance moves or whatever, but now I'm inspired by him as a person, as a human being and, and what he has uh, done for, I think, the world. And now just making sure that we spread that message across as much as possible uh, is what brings me true joy. Wow, that is, that, yeah, that, you talk about full circle, that just, um, that, that's, wow. I'll just let that moment sink in right now. Um, just any, well, first of all, thank you for, you know, letting me talk to you like this and, uh, please everyone go see all my life. It, um, it truly is, uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, just in general. And, uh, please, uh, you know, you come for Harry, come for Jessica, but just stay for, stay for this amazing story and the amazing direction and, and just the amazing cast. Um, there's just so much there that I wish we could cover. So, but, uh, any final words you want to say? Any final thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, I thank you to Gold House uh, and being Jeremy and, and, and then the rest of the, the crew for continuing to support stories that, you know, uh, that matter, I think, for the community and also just, I think, for the greater good of just storytelling and, 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 and providing stories that um, some people might not be introduced to. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really grateful for this Q&A and, and to you, Ken. I mean, just, I, I, I respect the hell out of you, man. And I, I, um, you know, I've known you for uh, a long time. And, um, and just, just the fact that you also uh, are, are close to buying Fox and owning Fox, having your block. <laughs> Uh, is, is, is pretty All right, that's another competing that's studio. That's something worth celebrating. You know, you just need a couple more shows on there, and uh, you'll have uh, full ownership of, of the of the station. So, <laughs> we're taking over, brother. <laughs> oh, I'll come to you and ask for a show in the future. So, uh, <laughs> just, just don't change your number. That's all I. <laughs> I, again, I want to thank Gold House, too. I want to thank Universal Studios. And uh, just want to thank uh, my dear friend, Harry, for just letting um, you know, just letting me talk to you. Thank you to Cape. Thank you to everybody right now. And everyone go see All My Life. It's, uh, it's just an incredible performance with incredible people. And um, just uh, thank you for your time. So love you, brother. Love you so much, Harry. Love Great you. job. Thank you so much.